So we now have to bring you up to speed with our top stories for the morning and uh, now our headlines. Uh, former Deputy Minister of Energy uh, Albert Kandapai and his Deputy Katie Armont will uh, appear before the Judgment Debt Commission today to answer questions on the sale of that controversial drill ship Discovery 511. And Deputy Minister for Education Samuel Kujetua Blaka says continuing students at the College of Education are not affected by the decision to withdraw allowances paid to their teacher trainees. Well, so we now bring you the details of the news but in the course of this whole program also the AM show which is live on the Joint News Channel on Multi TV please get interactive on our social network pages we have made, lab, we have made available for you. We have Join News on TV on Facebook and as well, um, that very short code, 1760. Well, our first story. The Environmental Protection Agency, in collaboration with Tala Oil Ghana Limited and its Jubilee Partners, have organized a three-day public hearing in the Western region to give representatives of affected communities a chance to contribute towards the proposed Trinibois in Yura and in Tum, known as the 10 Project. Western Regional Correspondent Emmanuel Benjamin Peters, his father's report. Talo Kana Limited and its partners proposed to develop the Chenebua, Enyera, and Ntumi hydrocarbon fields offshore Ghana, known as the TAN project. It is situated approximately 20 kilometers to the west of the Jubilee field and is the second major hydrocarbon development offshore Ghana. Oil production from the TAN fields is expected to start in mid-2016 and will reach an output of approximately 80,000 barrels per day by 2017. It is expected that the total recovery of oil and gas will be approximately 312 million barrels of oil equivalent over the 20-year life of the project. At a public hearing on the project, representative for the six affected coastal communities raised concerns on the impact of the project on livelihood, environment, health and education. Another issue of concern raised was the recent spate of beached whales which have been attributed to oil and gas activities. The municipal chief executive for Enzima East, James Atakakrabedu, reiterated that disparities in mapping our development projects and even scholarships has resulted in communal dissatisfaction against Talo Oil and the Jubilee Partners. Most often, we get to know that they are taking projects to Ghana, like they are taking projects to Jamara, sometimes Aranta West. And I think it's cut off from their programs. Uh, for the past two years, they've been at, uh, I think, yes, uh, making efforts to uh, put up infrastructure projects for them. Yet, two years on the line, nothing has shown. An assembly member for Abuaze Fasin electoral area in the Ahanta West District, Ebenezer Asian, however, called on the EPA to be proactive. I have a problem with EPA and how they go about their assessment. Because they, they, they are a government institution and it is expected that they do what they are supposed to do. Nothing more, nothing less. But EPA will come out with their assessment. And you will find a whole lot of things concerning the assessment that they have done. The principal officer for oil and gas at the Environmental Protection Agency, Kojo Enyinam, however, disagrees with the public, especially about the performance of the EPA, and urged them to exercise restraint. Minister of Energy Honorable Albert Kandapai and his deputy Katie Hammond under the Kufo government will on today, Monday, appear before the Judgment Debt Commission to answer questions on the sale of the drill ship Discovery 511. The ship was sold to pay a judgment debt awarded against the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation, that's the GNPC, to Societe General over the execution of the contract. The commissioner has raised a number of questions over the sale of the ship and the role of um, Bank of Ghana and the GMPC. The public record. 
the sale. Uh, the commission's last sitting um, acting controller and accountant general, Mrs. Grace Azaro, revealed that the accounts opened for the sale of the ship, although it had been traced but had no money in it. Other institutions to appear are the Bank of Ghana, Ministry of Employment and Labor Relations, Ministry of Roads and Transport, and Pardon of Feeder Roads, and the Ministry of Water, Housing, Works. Over 3,000 persons living at Lante, it's a suburb of Dubronia in Sawam, risk being rendered homeless from today, November 25, 2013, as landowners in the in Sawam Adwejri municipality have said notice to pull down their structures. This is also to allow a private stone quarry to commence operations, even though the new steam gathers its lease over the land has so far expired. Yafuswa Jemfi, who visited the community report, the residents are kicking against their decision to pull down their structures, arguing their documentation to prove they are legally owned um, or to prove that they legally own their lands. It's said to have been allocated to Kobe Stone Quarry Company and residents are however worried about the new development of land gas patrolling the area and threatening their lives. Some residents we met on Saturday afternoon had packed their bags ready to leave the community because they are being harassed by land guards. Margaret Domenyo, a pregnant woman, is almost due for delivery. She tells me though she's against the idea of leaving the community, she has no option. Apparently, the battle over ownership of the land has been raging for three years now. In spite of this, residents say they first received notice to vacate their lands just about three months ago from the district assembly. The notice signed by the assembly's assistant director has been served to over 105 buildings within the 100-meter radius of the quarry site to vacate the premise. Two other notices dated October 7 and 14, 2013, signed by Ishmael Aite, supposedly the head of the Aite family, owners of the land, warned residents to vacate the area by November 25, 2013. But some members of the Aite family tells Joy News they are against the sighting of the stone quarry in the area. Yeah, Sa <laughs> Tensions heightened at Latai as residents whose buildings have been earmarked for demolition on Monday say they are ready to face the contractor of the stone quarry when they are in to eject them from their residence. sorry, toilet five times Yellow blue and Blue kiosis, any sisusu. Yeah, 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 ma. Any yukunum, any yo. Until you are trying to say Monday, no. You may add them, now you won't quan. Now I'm holding what Monday, no. You won't. I'm going to be ready. Yeah, yeah, ready. I'm going to be ready. No, mum. You are trying Monday, no. The best you are handed here. I just said Monday, you do answer. The activities of the mining company, according to residents, will not only affect the over 100 houses earmarked for demolition, but the entire community. Meanwhile, preparatory works have already begun at the area earmarked for the mining company. Meanwhile, Municipal Chief Executive of the Nsawadweji Municipal Assembly, Mark Dumpa, Dumpre, has asked residents to disregard the notice of eviction as the Assembly is arranging a stakeholders' meeting to resolve the matter. He assured residents that demolition will not go ahead without an order from the court. According to the DCE, security in the area has been beefed up following threats from land guards in the community. We have reports from the settlers 
that the quarry companies are using land gas personally i haven't seen anything like that neither has anybody from the assembly seen anything but these are reports but what we have done through the municipal security council music is to ask the police department to increase patrol in the area so that land gas could not be used to force anybody out of where they are residing at the moment. The use of land gas in any part of this country is illegal, and we will ensure that land gas are not used in this particular instance. He, however, conceded about 90% of occupants do not have permits to build in the area. But the assembly doesn't want to come in at this particular time because of the litigation between the quarry company and the residents. We coming in is actually going to convolute the whole situation. And we have already taken our foot off the pedal to ensure that the litigation going on will first be solved. Once that is solved, the assembly will advise itself as far as what to do with people who have, you know, built without permits from the assembly. But residents have dismissed the DC's claim that they do not have permits to build. Those who don't have permits, it is not because they don't want to take the permit. Some have paid money and their documents are still with the assembly. Permits have not been granted. Our investigations some few months back, we realized that the Kobe Quarry and then the IET family had written to the assembly not to grant anybody around this area permits. And that is the reason why people don't have permits. And so if we are able to resolve this issue and the quarry is no longer taking place, people will not be going for their permit because they have paid. The district assembly is expected to issue a counter eviction notice on Monday, urging residents to stay in the community. We turn our attention to education and teacher trainees at the Accra College of Education will be joining their colleagues in the Ashanti and Bonaf regions to protest against crapping of their allowances. The trainees insist the allowance they receive was a source of their survival while in school. The teacher trainees intend to pressure government to restore their allowances. We are starting on Tuesday. We are going to put on red armbands to class to, to send the message across to the government that we are serious about this issue and the government needs to address it. And if the government does not respond after taking that measure, then we will go on a sit-down strike. We will not allow any tutor to come to class and we won't learn. They say removing the allowance most of them are dependent on will affect their studies. We agree with the government with some of the reasons given, but scrubbing it off entirely no, is really going to affect us. So if we get even half of it, we are okay with it. Another reason the government gave was the fact that they want to upgrade those tertiary institutions where you award degrees. So if you have been awarded a degree, someone in the University of Education will be a degree, the University of Cape Coast a degree, and they are not getting allowance. Why do you think you deserve allowance? Well, we are a special type of um, tertiary institution because here in our colleges of education, before you go out, you need to get exit, which is not happening in other college, um, other tertiary institutions. We do our own within and all that, which is not happening at other colleges. Um, sorry, tertiary institutions. After our education here, we are posted to stations where you are to serve a mandatory number of years, but in other tertiary institutions, it's not happening there. So we are a special type of institution and we need the allowance, we deserve the allowance. According to the student president, they are yet to receive response from government after the national executives petitioned government to reconsider its decision. The policy to withdraw the allowances, however, is only applicable to new entrants. Continuing students in colleges of education will not be affected. Meanwhile, the Deputy Minister of Education, Samuel Okujeto Ablakwa, has said the quota system, which had been in existence for almost three decades, had become inimical to the progress of teacher education, hence the decision to remove it. He said government had increased the allocation for the student loan trust to support teacher trainees who require financial assistance. Well, 
So that'll be it for the news updates on the AM show, which is live on the Joy News channel of Multi TV. Now, our top headlines for the morning. Former Deputy Minister of Energy, Honorable Albert Kandapa, and his deputy Katie Hammond will appear before the Judgment Debt Commission today to answer questions on the still order drill ship discovery 511. In education, uh, Deputy Minister of the Sector Samuel Okujetua Blackburn says continuing students at the colleges of education are not affected by a decision to withdraw allowances paid to teacher trainees. Uh, so that's it for the morning. Next, we bring you AM Sports, and it also includes all the weekend sports highlights.